Take a moment to imagine you're a young child, curious about the world, full of joy to explore. Feel that positive energy you used to get when you learned something new. You know the feeling when everything clicks in your head and the light bulb turns on. That's your default state. You're just like everyone else, biologically wired to feel pleasure when learning so you can become the ultimate version of yourself. As a child, you probably feel like you could be a superhero. Now let the scene fade. Fast forward to when you're a teenager. No, God, I know you don't want to relive those years, but stick with me for a second. You're growing up during a time when people are attacking each other on social media. The days seem to get hotter and everyone keeps hollering at each other about a warming climate. You, your friends, your parents, everyone around you seems to be dealing with some sort of anxiety or depression. And worst of all, your years of being dragged through the education system have beaten the joy of learning right out of you. Yet, there is still a part of you, a deep, passionate part that wishes you could do something, make some sort of difference, but you don't know how. You take a walk on a cold, rainy day. On your walk, you see the despair of those stricken in poverty or those without a home. You stop to talk to a gentleman laying on the ground. His clothes are torn, smeared with dirt, and a pungent odor invades your nostrils. You ask him, why is he laying there? He chokes up as he tells this story about struggling with his mental health and losing his home. You then ask his name, Andrew. Let the scene fade. Now imagine that it's time to go to college. You have absolutely no idea what you want to do with your life. Your counselor keeps throwing a course catalog in your face telling you that you need to pick a degree. Your parents keep telling you you need to do something. But how do you choose? What do you want to do? Who are you even? All your friends are choosing colleges, picking whatever degree is going to give them enough free time to party. But you feel different. You remember all those images from your earlier years of atrocities happening in the world. You feel a pang in your chest and a knot in your throat. You remember that rainy day that you met Andrew. Something, there must be something that you can do. You feel overwhelmed knowing you're still just a kid. You haven't even moved out of your parents' house yet. You don't know what you could do to help those like Andrew. But you get depressed when you realize going to a university and becoming an accountant is probably not it. You think to yourself, if I wanted to solve homelessness, how could I learn to do that? What skills would I need? Who even teaches something like that? Plato University. Hello, my name is Brandon Stover. I'm the founder of Plato University, a nonprofit on a mission to provide free education for the betterment of humanity. At one time, I chased the promise of the golden ticket, going for a career in architecture and spending five years in college to get an accredited architecture degree and $60,000 worth of debt. Eventually, though, I found myself miserable because I finally realized something. But before we get there, I want you to understand my motivations because I was just like you. See, I was a poor kid from the trailer park, living in a broken home, moved around several times, and watched many role models battle with drugs, incarceration, mental health problems, attempted suicide, and so on. Now, despite what these circumstances and statistics would have you believe, I absolutely loved learning. I can recall one of my first childhood books, This is the House Where Jack Lives, and to this day can still recite it by memory. This is the boy that walked the dog that lives in the house where Jack lives. I promise I won't do the whole book. See, when I was a kid, there was something about that feeling about being curious, challenging myself, and gaining knowledge about the world around me that left me intoxicated. Now, of course, my mom wanted me to live a better life, so she drove me to excel in school so that I could eventually get into college. And I did everything that I could to try and get there. I was student of the month or student of the year, multiple times and multiple grades. I carried a 4.0 GPA out through my entire school career, took every advanced or gifted program that they had or offered. I even took the SATs in middle school and started applying for colleges then. And then when I got to high school, I only did two years and then started going to college in the Running Start program, getting my AA degree alongside my high school diploma. Then it finally came time for me to go to university. I wanted what we all wanted, 
go to a good school, get good grades, get a good degree, get a good job, and get the hell out of the trailer park. But really, I wanted to prove that circumstances don't determine your success. And of course, I wanted to make my mom proud. But like you, though, nowhere in the process did anybody ask me what I was truly passionate about or help me to go through the process of discovering that for myself. They just put a course catalog in front of me, opened it up, and said, choose one. So off I would go to college for architecture. But as I started checking off boxes to complete my degree, I felt like I was having the learning be out of me. I was no longer learning and taking education for myself, but rather so I could just pay the bills once I graduated, including the crippling debt that I was racking up. Five years later, graduation came. I did have this feeling, though, that something was missing from my time spent. Regardless, I had this belief that I could help design a better world. People spend all their time inside buildings. Surely I could have a positive impact on how they lived with my new architecture degree. But I had no job lined up and spent months sending out hundreds of applications, doing dozens of interviews, sometimes for jobs that had nothing to do with my degree or that I really actually wanted. And then finally a breakthrough. I got my first job and I would spend the next three years dreading going into work every day, doing work that was deeply unfulfilling, feeling like I was on a repeat cycle, wake, eat, go to hell, I mean work, eat, sleep, repeat. One day, I would find myself trembling at my desk, huge architectural drawings scattered across the desk, glaring red lines written all over them. And I was staring at my reflection in the black, lifeless screens in front of me. I began trembling, stomach turning, feeling like somebody had poured concrete down my throat. Is this it? Is this all there is to life? Is this what I worked so hard for? I became depressed about my life and enraged that I just spent a huge chunk of it supposedly working towards something much more fulfilling. But ultimately, I had no meaning, no impact, or no sense of purpose in my life. I kept asking, what am I going to do with my life? The answer was purpose. In the depths of my nihilism, I decided to turn to something that had been long forgotten, my love for learning. While I withered away at my desk, I started listening to interviews of successful people on the podcast Impact Theory by Tom Bilyeu. On the podcast, Tom and several of his guests kept mentioning a book, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I figured if it helped these people out, I might as well read it too. Reading that book, I discovered what I was missing, a purpose. Viktor Frankl says man's heart is restless unless he has found and fulfilled meaning and purpose in life. But what was that purpose for me? To find out, I began a project of self-directed learning, exploring passions, devouring books like they were water, listening to as many podcasts as I could cram in a day at three times speed, investing in online courses, and interviewing dozens of social entrepreneurs about making a difference in the world. I started experimenting, building a portfolio of projects that allowed me to use the skills I was learning, some of them being utter failures, others getting me hired with mission-driven companies. During this time, I also began noticing some other factors in my life I was less than pleased with. Despite going to the gym, I was reaching upwards of 200 pounds, sheepish to take off my shirt, and experiencing immobilizing gut pain. I would soon learn about nutrition, wellness, and what I was experiencing was dysbiosis in my microbiome and a leaky gut. Again, I found myself angry that something as fundamental as feeding the human body was not taught to us. At the time, I had just gotten married, and although we were not screaming at each other, I felt a disconnection with the woman I had vowed to spend my life with. I started to learn how to effectively communicate in a relationship from spoken word to body language, the dynamics of feminine and masculine polarity, and building a life together. Here, I started to ask questions around why, if we're supposed to interact with human beings every single day, why are we not given the skills to do so? I would spend many nights awake, roughly getting a few hours of sleep as my mind raced with thoughts. Aside from learning the proper way to sleep, which is far from obvious, I began learning meditation, self-reflection, and understanding one's own presence. Frustrating as it is, we are not given the tools to understand who we are. I started to ask, if we have not even learned the fundamentals of being a human being, what else had our education lacked? If we are supposed to make an impact on this world, 
how would we ever be able to do so without having the tools we need? And how are we supposed to even know what impact we want to make? We don't even know ourselves. This is when I spent years researching the broken education system plaguing society. What I discovered is what the United Nations calls a polycrisis. See, a polycrisis is not one, but multiple crises happening simultaneously. Number one, the meaning crisis. 91% of people express the importance of living with a sense of purpose. You felt it, I felt it. The ever-looming question, why am I here? This question is correlated with increases in anxiety, disorders, depression, and despair around the world. And suicide is a leading cause of death in the U.S. Long ago in history, education used to help you answer that question. In fact, our old Greek friend Plato started his academy in 387 BC, which did not have any particular doctrine to teach. Rather, Plato proposed problems to be studied and solved by others. One of those problems was the meaning of our existence. Number two, the education crisis. Higher education is expected to have an additional 200 million new students by 2030. However, there is expected to be a $8.5 trillion loss due to a shortage of skilled talent. Clearly, education is falling short of actually preparing skilled students while simultaneously costing too much. A 62% of students worldwide still can't gain access to education. Number three, the planetary crisis. Climate change, poverty, pandemics, social conflict. The global challenges needing solutions are beginning to stack up. Progress towards solving them are grim, with more than 50% of targets of the Sustainable Development Goals being weak and insufficient, while 30% have stalled or gone into reverse. I think we sure could use some bright minds focused on solving these problems. My education be falling short of supplying those bright minds? So now we have this polycrisis of thousands of people walking around in meaningless lives, global challenges that threaten our existence, and an education system that can't even prepare students to perpetuate the systems that created the first two problems. Excuse my language, but what the hell are we going to do? I want to take you back to one formula that changed my life forever. Purpose equals something that's meaningful to the self plus consequential to the world. Again. That's something that's meaningful to the self and consequential to the worry. Let's break this down. The self is a culmination of your interests, personality, strengths, beliefs, emotions, memories, basically the software that runs your mind. Everything runs through these filters to determine meaning. The second piece of our equation are actions that are consequential to the world. If we understand that society optimizes for what is good for the whole to continue, then actions in alignment with that are rewarded. And oftentimes, the bigger the challenge, the bigger the reward. Our job is to align what is meaningful to the self with what is good for the whole of society. But how do we bridge the gap between those two? I believe the solution is education. Education allows you, the individual, to take actions that solve real problems in the world. Education underlies all other complex problems in our society we solve the problems in the education system, we can prepare students with the skills they need to solve all other global challenges. When you learn to solve problems important and close to you, your capacity for problem solving increases beyond your own life, possibly to global levels. By undertaking responsibility beyond yourself, you cultivate a sense of purpose. So education of each individual becomes a primary intervention in addressing the crises of our time. This is why I'm building Plato University, a nonprofit on a mission to provide free education for the betterment of humanity. At Plato University, we provide free access to online mission-driven courses that cover skills that are not taught in traditional universities with a focus on solving the world's greatest challenges. We are currently on phase one of building out our courses. So far, we've published five courses and have garnered over 700 students to the platform. These courses are also widely distributed through podcasts and YouTube to reach as many people as possible, which has garnered over 400,000 downloads in 143 countries. Our next courses are going to be in our Global Challenge series, starting with our How to Solve Climate Change course, which features over 30 renowned scientists, professors, CEOs, and nonprofit leaders. Courses following that will be on How to Solve Poverty and How to Solve the Mental Health Crisis. 
We're also going to begin production of our foundational skill courses, which include critical thinking, creative thinking, communication, collaboration, and character building, and creating courses in highly actionable skills, like how to write a policy and how to read scientific studies. As mentioned before, all of our courses are distributed as podcasts, YouTube videos, alongside being hosted on the Plato University platform. This allows us to meet as many students as possible where they already are. In the future, we'll be adapting our courses for every social media platform in order to expand our distribution. Now, doing this strategy takes on a dual purpose. One, distributing information, what's being taught in the courses. But two, they act as content marketing, giving the students opportunities to try the education before they fully commit. When they are ready to further their education and join a community of learners just like them, they enroll at Plato.University. Which leads me to phase two, where we will deliver live 12-week fellowship programs where students declare missions rather than majors and master skills with their associated mission. Now, missions are fundamentally different than majors. At a traditional university, a student may decide that they want to major in biology. That major will help to prepare students for jobs in biology, but may be less applicable to anything outside of biology. At Plato University, a student declares a mission and learns whatever skills is necessary to achieve that mission. For example, if their mission was to provide clean drinking water for the world, they may learn a few skills taught traditionally in biology, but they're also probably going to learn things that are taught in computer science, business, sociology, and more. This prepares students to actually make real world change while simultaneously preparing them for work in many avenues. Students will work with coaches to create personalized learning pathways, stacking skills that guide what the student needs to learn in order to successfully complete their mission. Students will then work alongside other fellows on real world projects associated with their mission, building a portfolio of evidence for their education and culminating in a capstone project where they make an attempt at implementing their solution to the global challenge. After graduating from Plato University, students continue to access the online platform and use the content and resources it provides. As we teach our students the skills necessary for self-driven learning, students will be able to develop their own learning projects as they need to, to brush up on skills in their career and life. Now, after several successful fellowships and developing our online courses, we'll move into phase three, which will be acquiring real estate across the country and the globe eventually, in order to have multi-use buildings where students can live and learn alongside one another. Students will be allowed to move between these hubs to locate themselves for the best environment and opportunities for resources necessary to learn skills for achieving their missions. For example, moving to Austin, Texas to work alongside Tesla as they learn about electrical vehicles as a possible solution to climate change. Successful completion of phase three will result in a decentralized learning network with access to high quality education specifically designed for that student, anytime, anywhere. Students will be able to learn online and then take action in their specific environment, not four years later, but in the same day, maybe within even the same hour as they learn the material. I believe we can live in a world where the brightest minds of each generation are passionately focused on solving the world's greatest challenges. A world where people have meaning and purpose, where they are excited to wake up each day and work on problems they care the most about. A world where climate change is not a looming death sentence. Poverty is a thing of the past. Positive mental health is the norm and so much more. A world where each person has access to education to make their life and the lives of those around them better. A world where education is serving those who are bettering humanity. Now, if you would like to see this world, here's how you can help. First and foremost, we're looking for passionate, revolutionary people to join our board. In order to achieve official nonprofit status, we need a board for Plato University. The board will be responsible for the direction of Plato University and also be its true leaders, always promoting its mission. We're looking for those that have expertise in online education, AI technology, real estate, media, and nonprofits. Now, once a board is chosen, Plato University will need to file for nonprofit status. Lawyer fees for doing this vary depending on the complexity of the filing. We're a university. It's going to be complicated. So we're expecting somewhere between ten dollars and $20,000 in lawyer fees in order to, to achieve this. 
So we're seeking large sum private donations in order to cover those fees and our startup operating costs. If you were a philanthropist that particularly resonates with this message, I would love to have you become a noble member of Plato University. The nobles fund our overhead and fuel our mission to provide free education for the betterment of humanity. Like any startup, we need visionary investors like you who believe in and support our business model so that we can stay focused on what matters most, changing education. Since we can't offer stock options or the promise of a big buyout to our investors, as a noble, your return on investment will be measured in the amount of lives that are changed by education. Now, maybe you can contribute on the level of being on the board or donating some large sum of money, but you still have a passion for education or content creation. Right now, we're focused on creating our courses. So we need content creators and video and audio editors and marketing team members. If that sounds like you or you think you have a unique skill set that could potentially help our mission, please reach out. Now, at the end of the day, the best way that you can help is by spreading the word. Do you know someone that our courses may help? Then send them to Plato.University. Do you know somebody that's passionate about education and could help us build Plato University? Then please share this video with them. And if this message resonates with you, please reach out to me personally. My email is Brandon at BrandonStover.com. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Let's build something great together.